much. My name is David Reich, and I am the observations. Okay, what the heck's an observations? How did I become an observation? What the heck is this thing? Well, it started many years ago when I used to listen quite often to the American comedian George Carlin, who gave me a love of language. Now, George Carlin had a unique and often very colorfully worded way of observing the world. And I really thought about what he was saying and how he was making us look at the uniqueness, the paradoxes, the absurdities of our world. And what that gave me, aside from the entertainment value and, and excuse to listen to bad language, was a keen awareness of how people observe the world around them and process information. Now, at about the same time, as with many adolescents, I became interested in magic. Not the card game, but performing feats of illusion. You know, the vanishing napkin, pick a card. I learned all those tricks that all the kids learn, and I got really good at them. And I started performing at birthday parties and annoying friends and family. And while I was learning all these tricks and performing and making people say, no, I didn't just see that. What was it really that I was doing? Now, is it the hand is quicker than the eye? I'm going to tell you, it's actually not. In fact, the slower an effect is performed, the more powerful it is. So I'm looking and seeing what people are thinking and how people are processing information. I started looking at people and not so much observing the things about people, but developing an awareness through observation of people, how people process information how people are in patterns and don't really notice the things that are going on around them. They often say that if you want to hide something, hide it in plain sight and people are not going to notice it. So I started really studying and involving myself in the analysis of people. And through my performances and demonstrations and, um, <laughs> demonstrations and experiments, that's where I was going, of magic, mentalism, and yeah, even hypnosis. I started looking at how people were going through life and operating and behaving without actually thinking. In fact, people start to pay less attention to more things. Now, my goal here is through some entertainment, some education, and actually some enlightenment, talk to you about how you're observing the world and give you some additional and alternative views of the reality, which is really just your belief system, what society has said to you, the differences in the cultures, what you're going to do based on different stimulus. Now, a lot of people think today we're all hyper-observant. I mean, we have the internet. We are constantly connected. Our computers, we are walking around with our heads buried in our cell phones, social media, everything going on at all, all the time. In reality, we're actually less observant. So here's one of my... Uh, one of my examples. You ever drive down the motorway and you shake yourself back into awareness and you find yourself five miles down the road, ten miles down the road, how the heck did that just happen? And you're now terrified about just what... Now, you might think, I was zoning out. What was going on? I could have died there. In reality, that's a term we have. It's, it's actually a state called highway hypnosis. Now, more than likely, especially because if it did happen to you, you're here, you arrived safely. You were aware of everything that was going on. You weren't conscious of it, but you were avoiding other drivers. You were maintaining your speed. You weren't veering into other lanes. So you were actually aware of what was going on, but you weren't truly conscious of it. You weren't truly observant of it. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to stare at this screen for five seconds. Ready? Yeah, that's all. All right. Now, what was the color of the text of the instructions? What was the title of the slide? What was the color of the lines of the rectangles? What? You thought I was going to ask you how many rectangles there were? All I did was ask you to look at the screen. Your brains filled in the rest. We are conditioned to take one piece of stimulus and just start filling in everything else through all of our life experiences. There's another example. I tend to do this. I'm not going to advocate that you do this. Um, I haven't gotten in trouble yet from it. But 
Um, in the United States, the ATMs often dispense currency in $20 bills. And you're out with friends, you're out at a restaurant, you need to leave a tip, you want to split the bill, you need smaller denominations. So you might ask the wait staff, the bartender, if they can give you something smaller for a 20. And it's a common verbal exchange. And it often goes like this. Excuse me, can you break a 20 for me? Sure, how would you like that? Two tens and a five, please. Okay, I see a, I see a couple of people up front. Okay, you realize what I just did. I just told them to give me $25. You have no idea how many people, without thinking, hand over two tens and a five. Give me the money, and I could just walk out the door. I have never done it. I, I promise I've never done it. All right? But I could have. And the look on their faces when I say, do you realize what you just did? Now, as I was doing it, I just did it for fun all the time, just as an, an experiment of observation. I said, how many people are really doing this? And unscientifically, I found about a quarter of the people actually gave me the money. About half the people will actually go to the drawer, take out the money, come over to me, either hand it to me or stop me right after or just before, and they say, there's something not right. They don't know what it is. Right? They know there's something not right. There's something back there telling them. They are still not observant. They're not realizing what was just said to me. So, the, well, the, the final 25% of the people, I ask them for two tens and a five, and they go, yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> and at which point, we, 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 have, we have a good laugh. Uh, there's a term we use for this. Um, several people use different terms. A friend of mine calls it selective perception. I call it sensory acuity. You are acutely aware of what's going on because you are observing the world around you. So what I want to do now is an interactive um, experiment with several people in the audience. And I'm going to ask you to write some things on some cards. And through observing you, I am going to figure out what each of you wrote on these cards. Okay? Kind of Sherlock Holmesian type experiment. I figured I'm, we're doing this in the UK. Let's go for it. <laughs> so I'm going to hand out four cards and four Sharpies. And what I'm going to ask is think about where you grew up, not where you were born, not where you live now, but where your formative years were, what, how you were brought up. All right? um, if you moved around every two years because you were in a military family, don't do that one. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe you, and I'm going to pick out which of you have written which things on which cards. So can I get a couple of volunteers? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not going to do the entire first row. <laughs> and there we go. Oops. It would be a good idea if I gave you guys the sharpies, wouldn't it? Okay. Now, I don't want to. Where's the fourth one? Sorry. Now, I don't want to see what you're writing down. I want you to write it down big and bold so when I hold it up, other people can see it. But, um, but turn it over as soon as you write it, okay? So I'm not going to look. Okay, write it down quickly. Because otherwise we're just stand, standing there with, with, the, uh, with the cameras going. Let me know when you're ready. When you turn it over, okay, yours is turned over. All right, can you have that face down, please? Face down. Face down. And now, I'd like all four of you to stand, please. I promise I'm not going to do anything embarrassing. <laughs> I'm going to mix them up so I don't know which one is which. Okay? We're going to turn over the first one. Okay? Berkshire. Let's see. Hmm. Berkshire. Now I'm looking at how everyone is standing. I'm looking at how you're holding yourself. Looking at the way you're dressed. So you're standing there, hand on the chair, whether you're smiling, whether you're not, whether you're reserved. Um, Berkshire? It's Berkshire, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, can sit down? All right. Next. I've got them upside down. 
Toronto. Now that's a, now it's actually closer to my home, so I can say Toronto. <laughs> um, people from Canada, they're really, really nice. Uh, I know. Um, I'm looking. Also, people from Canada are reserved, even by British standards. Um, well, excellent. Who has that back? Okay. Sherburn, Dorset, Saturday, all close. <laughs> yeah. I want to see if I got it pronounced properly. All right. Got a 50-50 shot of <laughs> I'm looking at how you're holding your hands. You haven't moved your hands yet. Get your hands clapped. Do me a favor. If you see somebody that you haven't seen, you walked into a party, a wedding, and you see someone across the room that you haven't seen in a while, how would you wave to them? Wave to me like you're like, okay. didn't, do the, didn't do the queen wave. <laughs> um, wait, wait for it. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> oh man. All right. Now, this is not going to be terribly exciting if I just turn over the card and say this is where, you know, this is who you are. Not terribly exciting. I'm going to make this a little more difficult. By looking at you, and I've been observing you the whole time, even though I've been talking to everyone else. Let me see where you're from. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell everyone else you know where you're from. <laughs> Let's see. Wave to, wave to me again. All right. If you're if you're standing in a conversation with somebody, a small circle of people, you know, some people cross their arms, some people put their hands in their pockets, some people put their hands behind their back. Show me how you might ordinarily stand. And if it's the way you are right now, just stay that way. I thought perhaps I might have made the longest trip here. I think you might, you're not from here, I know that. And I haven't heard you speak, and that was one of the things I wanted to make sure, not to hear anybody speak, because if I hear a French accent, gee, that one needs it away, right? Yeah. Definitely not from the UK. Not from Europe. <laughs> I'm not sure the distance, I think I might have come the furthest, but you might have, are you from Moscow? Nice. Wow. Nice. All right. So that is how I became an observationist. When we go through life, going through patterns, going through life without thinking of what's going on, giving people money without thinking about it, we miss more than we actually see. So how can you change things? How can you become more of an observationist? Break those patterns that you've been going through. How can you break those patterns? Simple. When we're done here today, take a different route home. Just however you were going to go, change it up. Go to a restaurant you never went to before. Put yourself, force yourself into a situation where you have to pay attention. Otherwise, you're going to be giving 25 pounds to everyone asking you to break, to break a 20. Not going to be terribly good. Now, there's a concept that everybody's talking about these days, mindfulness, just being present. They often say just showing up is half the battle. If you just show up, you're going to miss all the wonderful things in the world. You need to show up and actively be present, actively observe what's going on. What I want you to walk away with today is not to be scared of the world, not scam artists. <laughs> that are going to try and you know, take your money, not to be afraid of things, but rather with an enhanced view of the world. My gift to you today is sensory acuity. You're going to remember that term. You're going to look around and you're going to say, I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at those things and I'm going to really be aware of what's going on around me, what's being asked for, of me. With that enhanced view of the world, you're going to accomplish more. You're going to enjoy more. And by and through observation, you're going to be a much more effective communicator. So, thank you very much.